Hi, it's Ed Butowski. So today I want to talk about something very basic, and that has to do with fixed income. And now that rates have gone higher, a lot of people are thinking about, you know, buying into one year or six month CDs or treasury bills or even double A rated or single A rated corporate bonds. And I want to point out that the way that these rates have gone higher is simply because inflation has pushed them higher. So any time in history that you can get a high rate of return on fixed income, it's because inflation has pushed them higher. So in the uh, early 1980s, you had uh, rates up around 20%, but you had inflation up around 17%. And then when you take out taxes, you would have lost purchasing power. So I want to point out to you here that I'm using the six month CD rate as an example, but you can use any type of fixed income investment. And if you're going to be maturing in a six month or one year time horizon, this is not a great way to manage your money because you want to be able to take advantage of interest rates dropping and then the value of these going higher. Um, and that won't happen on a short term uh, fixed income instrument. So an example would be here, 2023, you had, if you bought a six month CD, and again, it could be any fixed income investment, you would have made 4.76%, which sounds really good. But when you take out your federal income taxes and your after-tax return is 3%, then you subtract out inflation, which is 5.58%, you lost 2.5% purchasing power. So again, anytime you think that you're going to be making money on fixed income, you have to go through this real return exercise. So the real return is taking what you've made, subtract out taxes, subtract out inflation, and then that's what your real return is. And this shows historically, if you had invested in six month CDs, you would have lost 1.12% purchasing power each year on average. And it's an interesting chart to look at because anytime you could get a higher rate of return, like for instance here in 2008, you can get 2.18, but inflation was 3.8 and your after-tax return was 1.42, so you lost 2.38% purchasing power. And that's the key to investing is knowing what you're gonna be able to keep after taxes, after your cost of living increase or inflation. So I just wanted to point this out to you because a lot of people are calling, talking about uh, you know, locking in yields, which is a great idea. But if you're going to do that, you want to make sure that you lock them in now when interest rates are higher. And if, the fact, if in fact interest rates go lower, you want to be able to have some sort of runway. So you don't want them to be six month or one year or two year bonds. You want them to be a little bit longer than that. Uh, but again, you want to look at your real after-tax, after-inflation return.